New Zealand is a country with significant natural hazard risk and GeoNet has vastly improved our ability to detect and understand these risks. GeoNet data is integral to the research that we do at GeoNet Science on Natural Hazards. It enables a science scientist to provide uh, excellent responses to natural hazards events. I try and figure out what happens to New Zealand cities when a large earthquake happens nearby. So I try and figure out how bad it's going to be for certain certain places around the city. I use GeoNet data, I use the GPS data to study slow slip events or silent earthquakes that are happening on the Hikarangi subduction zone beneath the North Island. Some of the times uh, we're using GeoNet data by themselves, like when we've been doing ambient noise tomography, uh, using data from all the different seismographs around the country. I'm using this data to look at low frequency earthquakes in the central part of the Southern Alps. The building instrumentation program has enabled us to get high quality data of uh, the response of a range of different structures. EQC uses this knowledge to reduce the uncertainty in the pricing of risk, which helps us to maintain the confidence of international insurance markets. It's given us a whole new view into what's happening on the major subduction megathrust plate boundary, which is one of the biggest sources of, of tsunami and earthquake hazard to New Zealand. My research and, and the research done by my students and colleagues is mostly focused on understanding the really fundamental uh, processes that control the occurrence of earthquakes, the timing of earthquakes and potentially their size. I am producing graduate students who are working in seismological research. The quality of their work is enhanced by having the availability of good quality data from GNN. The work that we're doing here is um, in order to help us understand the behaviour of um, large fault prior to a major earthquake. The Canterbury earthquakes really highlighted that people really needed to know what was going on and scientists had to move at a rate that they'd never moved before to provide information for decision makers. Without the underlying GNET data that wouldn't have been possible. GeoNet reduces uncertainty, which means lower risk premiums for insurance and less costly guesswork for engineering design and even for land use. Without GeoNet we would be a far poorer place. We wouldn't understand uh, how earthquakes occur and uh, how we can respond better to them in the future. So I think that New Zealand without GeoNet would have fallen behind the rest of the world in seismological research. Everything would be a lot slower because I'd have to go out and do everything within five minutes. I can just, just get all the data I need rather than actually going out and collecting it all myself. GeoNet has provided us with a baseline and the infrastructure to support all of our research. Without it, our lives would be a lot more difficult. We have magnitude 7 slow slip events or silent earthquakes about every five years. We didn't know that until we had GeoNet, so we would know a lot less. So without GeoNet, I think we would be in a a difficult situation where we wouldn't have any hard data to sort of compare things with. I remember life without GNET and it was very ad hoc. Now a lot of people can just get data from GNET and do their research. The reinsurance uh, offshore was really important, the fact that that continued after Canterbury and that owes a lot to the depth of the research done in New Zealand, our understanding of our hazards and that's underpinned by things like GNET.